The United States Department of Justice is assembling a dedicated task force to go after the crimes of the Russian oligarchs. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. We will freeze and seize their yachts, their private jets, their opulent estates in world capitals. That was the president and his administration back when the war in Ukraine started. They were promising to hit Putin's friends where it hurts. Except six months later, one of Putin's best friends remains untouched. Roman Abranovich's yacht Solaris sits off Turkey. Well, he can't go to Saint Tropez or Capri this summer, but the coast of Turkey is still pretty nice. Currently, Abranovich's yacht is docked right off the coast, untouched, while his three other boats are still being hidden. Dmitry Alperovich is with us, founder of the Silverado Policy Accelerator. Hey, it's not just uh, Abranovich. It's, a bu it's 10 or 12 other of these guys, uh, and their yachts are all sailing around. They're enjoying the high life. Uh, video uh, from a journalist who took uh, a, and found these yachts, and the guys are still on them. Are, is Putin and his cronies kind of laughing at us? Well, what they found is that, indeed, there are safe havens where they can take these yachts. Turkey is one, Maldives is another, Dubai is another one as well. And they're trying to move their planes, they're trying to move their yachts there as quickly as possible to evade uh, U.S. sanctions. But we have gotten about two dozen yachts, by my count, at this point that have been seized. And by the way, Leland, guess who's paying for the maintenance of these yachts? The U.S. taxpayer. <laughs> and let me tell you, a 350-foot yacht is not cheap to maintain tens of millions of dollars for the crew and all the other means that has to go into it. So perhaps it's a good thing if we don't get them all because it's getting pretty expensive. Yeah, hopefully we can auction them off at some point, maybe, who knows. But I guess this goes to a bigger feeling. You know, we, we, at the beginning of the war, you and I talked almost every night, and there were all these sanctions that were going to really put the thumbscrews to Putin and, more importantly, sort of the oligarch ruling class in London or in, uh, in Moscow. It seems as that, though that has not happened. No, and the Russian economy has proven to be a lot more resilient than it has been uh, assumed. And the reality is that, yes, they've taken a huge hit economically, but they're still surviving. They're still prosecuting this war. And what Putin really counts on is that this winter, Europe is going to be in a deep, deep recession. The gas that he's cutting off already uh, uh, to Germany is going to impact them so bad this winter that they're going to probably shut off a lot of their key industries. Some of it they've already started to shut down. So um, he's betting that it's going to be a lot worse for the Europeans than it will be for him. What's happening with his ruling class? Is anybody starting to split off? Uh, there, rather than being in Turkey or the Maldives, they really want to be in Saint Tropez. They want to be. Uh, in St. Bart's this summer, they're upset about not being able to come to the United States, on and on? Well, the reality is many of them are, so they may not be taking their luxury yachts to those places, but a lot of them have been uh, vacationing in the Antibes and in Saint-Tropez and other places in southern France and Italy uh, this summer. Uh, so, uh, so far, they're still able to I mean, get is, in. I guess, so does any, is anybody in Russia really concerned about all the things that America said they were going to do? Is it... Did they play the long game here and just sit us out? And now we're worried about all sorts of other stuff and they're back to life as normal and continue to have their war in Ukraine? You know, Leland, they assumed that we would have a short attention span and it probably has proven to be right. So they think that they can outlast us. In terms of the war in Ukraine, you, you were spot on on this. You were talking about this this time last year. You predicted the war uh, was going to happen back in December and the like. Um, are, are we seeing any reason to believe this isn't going to just continue to be uh, this long slog and a more threatened Vladimir Putin will just be tougher on the West economically? No, I think that he is in for the long haul. And I think his maximalist ambitions of taking over that country, changing its regime are still there. He knows he can't achieve them in the short term. But he may be able to regroup, come back maybe a year or two later mm. and try to go for another bite at the apple. So uh, strap in. You're in for the long haul here. Yeah, with all of his buddies who uh, keep all their toys and all their money. Uh, and as you point out, we pay for the maintenance on the yachts while it all goes on. Uh, Dimitri, it's good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.